I'm joined by Wayne Besson, Executive Director of Truth Wins Out, now based in Burlington, Vermont, where I actually stopped through on the way back from Montreal. And uh, after trying to use Australian currency to pay a Canadian cab driver, I was so distraught by it that I figured I'd stop in Burlington and know I could use U.S. dollars. Well, wow, Can, uh, Australian dollars? We just carry Australian dollars it's, around? It's this whole mix-up. I got emails from people saying, I am an arrogant American. I think that any other country will just take any country's currency. And that's really not what it was. I explained the whole thing. Thing. But needless to say, it was good to stop in, in uh, downtown Burlington. You didn't bring a kangaroo with you, did you? No kangaroo. Okay, no pets, because I no. like pets in Canada. I bring my dog. Uh, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm aware of that, but unfortunately, no, I don't own any animals. So I had Paul Cameron on, the widely discredited, debunked, um, I guess, psychologist. I don't even know whether we can really still use that term, because the APA has actually disbarred him. And incredibly, he actually said on the show that there was a time when he was young, when he had been, he had been abused, and that he was attracted to men. Now, this was a pretty incredible revelation in Huffington Post and Ross Story, and everybody was writing about it. And it, I, I actually have to say, it was in, it was compelling to me that something we've been talking about for so long, a lot of the, the most fervently anti-gay activists oftentimes end up being gay themselves or having, uh, you know, some, some kind of past that would at least make us ask that question. But it was sad. I kind of felt bad for him also because he was abused and it's, I, I just, I had a mixed reaction. I mean, how should we interpret that revelation from Paul Cameron? On the personal level, we should be sad. It's tragic that a man would be so hurt so damaged, so wounded that he'd be compelled to spend his entire life striking back and lashing out and trying to hurt people. And that's exactly what appears to be in Paul Cameron's case and many of the other homophobes. We have seen already two major studies that have uh, shown that those who are most homophobic outwardly, inwardly, are the most likely to be gay. We and saw this is when they're actually subjected to, I don't know if subjected to is the right word, they are put in front of gay porn, and the ones who identify as most anti-gay seem to have a physical reaction that is the strongest to that gay porn. Yes, they appear to get activated rather <laughs> quickly to images of naked men, <laughs> right. which I'm no sexologist, I'm not Dr. Ruth, but it <laughs> right. doesn't sound straight to me. <laughs> right. Okay, so um, then I get this follow-up email from Paul Cameron, and he says, it's nice to be vindicated. And I look down, and what he's sending me is a study that claims to prove something which he said at the end of the interview, which is that if you are uh, the son uh, or daughter of some of gay parents, that you are more likely to be gay. Now, of course, my thought is, well, you're more likely to be comfortable coming out. I don't know that you're more likely to be gay. The study, it seems to have been been widely debunked already. I'm going to talk to him next week, but what do you hear? What do you think of when you hear that claim made? Gay children are more likely to come from gay parents. It's absolutely absurd. Every single gay person I know, including myself, came from a household with two straight parents. So uh, the idea that your parents have anything to do with your sexuality is absurd on its face. It's a, it's a typical canard used by the religious right to, uh, and it's very important they use this for them for what they do because they want to say that there's no natural, healthy way that somebody turns out to be gay. It's sure. always through family dysfunction or sexual abuse. In other words, something had to go wrong. If something went wrong, then gay is unnatural and it's bad. That's right. what they're trying to get at. Now, it's interesting uh, because what we saw, well, there's no study that's going to say that gay, that parents uh, who are gay will make their child gay, but we just did see a study that said that homophobic parents will likely uh, have a more likelihood to put their children in the closet and make them uh, self-loathing homosexuals. And uh, kind of like some of the religious right figures we keep seeing that proclaim how bad homosexuality is until they get caught with their pants down or tapping their foot in a restroom. Right. So when we, the, the other thing that seems to be completely ignored when you talk about this, uh, well, a lot, of, a lot of photography going on here, it's amazing. When we talk about uh, this idea, we, we seem to be forgetting that most uh, m most of the children of straight people are also straight, but they also have gay children, right? I mean, the, the, we're, we're, it's, it's also the straight parents that are having gay children. Gay people come from every imaginable family that's out there, yeah. from liberal to conservative, such as uh, Dick Cheney's daughter, <laughs> right. uh, Phyllis Schlafly's son. I mean, across the board, we come from every single culture. How you're raised, where you're raised the political philosophy in which you were raised has zero to do with whether you're gay or whether you're not. So it's, it's not environmental, as Tony Perkins claims. There, there is no evidence whatsoever that it has anything to do with environment. Right. And if you look, we, we come from every environment 
under the sun and the moon. It's just, there's no cause and effect. It's simply a smear campaign to say there is a cause and effect for those who just simply cannot accept the obvious fact that homosexuality is in the natural spectrum of human sexuality. It just is what it is, and it always has been and always will be. Last thing I want to touch on, President Obama making his uh, statement a month or so ago that he believes that full marriage equality is the way. Are you on the side that says this is a big step? Are you on the side that says this is not that different from the Ron Paul position of just let states decide? Or are you somewhere in the middle? I think what President Obama did was amazing. It was historic. This is a man of history, the first African-American president, and now he's the first president to endorse marriage equality. I don't agree with him that it should be left up to the states. If we did that, there would still be states, potentially, where there weren't interracial marriages. I don't think that gay couples should be subject to the tyranny of the majority in any state. We're the United States, not a collection of states where you cross the border and suddenly you're a second-class citizen. That's not what this country's about, and, and the times it has been about that, we've done what's right and changed that. Uh, I would like to see a sweeping uh, major, uh, court, Supreme Court ruling that allows all 50 states to uh, both either have marriage or accept marriages from other, that occur in other states. But if that doesn't occur, we're still going to win, whether it's on a state-by-state -state basis or a sweeping court victory. Because if you look at the polls, the younger generation is fully supportive of marriage equality. Uh, as more people come out, more people understand they have friends, neighbors, co-workers, and family members are gay and lesbian. And the writing is on the wall. The, it is. This is a lost cause for homophobes. The, the party's over. It's a matter of whether it's going to be this year with a big court whirling or in 10 or 15 years, sure. state by state, as they slowly see their grip on prejudice and discrimination slip away. All right. Wayne Besson, executive director of Truth Wins Out. Great to see you. Great to talk to you. Yeah, great as always. Love your show. Thank we you. We are huge fans of Truth Wins Out. Awesome. Thanks.